Fairbanks Focus is a locally produced public affairs program created in part by University of Alaska Fairbanks, KTVF, and Fairbanks Economic Development Corporation. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here at Fairbanks Focus Alaska View. I'm Annette Pearson, and today I am joined by Melanie Lindholm, volunteer for the Interior Alaska Center for Nonviolent Living. Um, thanks for joining us today, Melanie. You're welcome. Um, so I know that you are very involved as a volunteer around town, um, but I know that IAC has a special place in your heart, and I know you've done lots of volunteer activities for them. Yes. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about some of the things that you've done for IAC. Uh, I've done a lot of volunteering for IAC. Uh, they have an annual event called Ski for Women that I've done several years, and that's a fundraiser. Um, and you get to dress up in a costume and ski, and it's pretty cool. Uh, so that's pretty fun. And then I've also done other fundraising type things for them. They have an annual event that's um, different masks that are created by survivors as an artistic expression, oh, cool. and those are auctioned off, and that's an annual thing that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I've just done a lot of events with them and I believe in their mission to help people who are victims of domestic violence or sexual assault. Well, and, and, and I know that you, we, you are also a student up at the university. Yes. And so you're here to talk today about uh, a particular fundraiser and drive that you guys are currently having. Yes. Awesome. Um, tell, tell our people out there what they can do to, to help support IAC. Okay, if you would like to help support IAC, the current um, project that I'm working with is involving several UAF student organizations and we're doing a gift drive for Christmas this year for families that are in the shelter during Christmas time. Um, we're looking to provide gifts for between 50 and 75 families um, that are either at the shelter or in their housing programs that are through IAC. Um, we are in need of anything like it doesn't have to be toys. We're looking for practical things, that everyday kind of stuff. Um, I know it sounds kind of weird, but like things like underwear for all ages, all sizes, all genders, um, that's something that is needed by anybody who shows up at the shelter with literally nothing. Um, diapers, especially the larger sizes, those are things that are practical that like they need every day. So if, if you're looking for something that is really going to make a difference for somebody every day, that's what I would shoot for. But of course, IAC is looking for anything that can be given as a gift during the holidays to any gender, any age, uh, all sizes. We're looking for just about anything that can be given. Well, and, and you know, and I know I'm, I'm really familiar with IAC and what they do and who mm -hmm. they help. Um, I know that not everybody else is. And so they help support families who, who are sometimes escaping really bad situations. Yes. And so, you know, you have people who, like you said, are literally leaving their homes with the clothes on their back. Yes. And IAC does help people sort of establish a new home, get it furnished, sort of get themselves on their feet again um, yes. to start their new lives. And so I know when you're asking for things, people don't always think about like that gently used couch that's hanging out in the garage mm -hmm. that you know has been covered in plastic and is in really great condition that n can't find a home for, or you know plates, um, really any household items, yes. any clothes, yes. shoes, um, anything that can really is, is gently used and can be reused. Absolutely. So and you and you think about lots of little things too that you just never really consider. Um, now, and I don't know on IAC's policy on animals, what happens with families when they... Um, IAC actually partners with a boarding program to help families board their pets when they have to go to the shelter. Um, and actually this is a really big problem for families in Alaska. Alaska has some of the highest statistics in the nation for domestic violence. Um, Alaska has the highest rape rate, which is two and a half times the national average. Alaska has the highest child sexual assault rate, which is six times the national average. And we also have the highest rate for men murdering women. So this is a very 
very serious problem in Alaska. And IAC actually is not just servicing the city of Fairbanks, but also the whole interior of Alaska, which includes 32 rural villages. The services that are needed are so enormous that IAC just cannot provide help for everyone that needs it because they are severely underfunded. And so that's why myself and other people in these UAF student organizations decided to get together to do something about it. Well, and I know that there's lots of other groups that are involved in this drive, too. Yes. And so you guys are really getting help from all over campus. Yes. Very cool. And who else, where can people leave things if, you know, if they don't want to go out and take the truck downtown, but maybe they're on campus? Where are good places for people to leave stuff for the IAC drive? Okay, if you can't make it to IAC on 26th Avenue, um, there are two drop sites that are currently um, getting ready for uh, taking donations on campus at UAF. Uh, one is at the UAF Women's Center, which is actually in the Eielson building. Um, the other is at the Student Health and Counseling Center. So those two locations on campus will have drop site boxes that you can just drop off your donation. Um, Another way that you can donate if you don't want to make the trip to a drop site is you can go to IAC's website and donate online. That's another way and you just indicate that it's for Christmas when you make that donation so they can put it towards the appropriate fund. Um, and another way would be to um, buy a gift card. That's another way because um, that way then the client can get whatever they are in need of, and so gift cards are, are really helpful. Um, so those are two ways you can... Well, and they have something in place where you can actually sponsor a whole family, too. Yes, there is a separate program that's not part of my gift drive that I'm uh, heading. Um, that's a separate program that you can contact Michelle at IAC, and she will tell you about the other program where you can actually adopt a family. And so if you would like to do it that way, then you could get specific things for a specific family. Which is a really cool kind of concept, you know, um, especially when we're trying to teach our children about giving and how important, you know, taking care of the, your community is. It's a really cool thing to be able to be like, well, we'd like to actually sponsor a family mm -hmm. as a family. Yes. And I would encourage our viewers out there, you know, if you're thinking about teaching your children how to, to help your community, that's a really great and fun way because not only can you go out and do the shopping, um, then you can also get your children involved with picking out children, uh, cho toys for other children. Um, and I think that's a really cool concept. Um, so who are some of the other people that are helping to sponsor this drive? Um, the drive that I'm helping with is uh, going to be in cooperation with several of the student organizations on campus. One is OSSW, which is the Social Workers Student Org. Um, one is the Norris Student Org, which is the Northern Studies Program, which I am a, a graduate student in. Um, another one is the UAF GSA, and also VOX, which is the Voices for Choice for Planned Parenthood student organization. Um, so those are the student orgs that are participating in the gift drive. And um, of course we have cooperation with IEC, the Women's Center, and the Health and Counseling Center. Um, if you would like to make a donation through our gift drive this year, um, it will be between December 1st and December 20th, and we please ask that all of the gifts be unwrapped because we need to know what it is so it can go to the appropriate client. Very cool. And do you know the website off the, off the top of your head it's by chance? It's N vl.org. So it's Interior Alaska Center for Nonviolent Living. Just take each of those uh, first initials, .org. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and there's a phone number that people can call too. Yes, it is 452-2293. That is the number for um, the Interior Alaska Center for Nonviolent Living. If you have questions about uh, the gift program that you can donate a, um, to or a family that you would like to adopt, um, that's another option, but Michelle at IAC could answer those questions for 5-2-2-2-9-3. <laughs> so I don't remember it. That's, that's really cool, and like I said, and you're just, you're just a volunteer, mm -hmm. and you do all kinds of stuff with them. Yes. So I know sometimes Christmas isn't the best time for people to really 
be thinking about what they can do, but that doesn't mean the IAC doesn't need help year-round. Yes. And that was one of the reasons why I was so glad that you came. Um, I know that you can't talk as an employee of IAC for IAC, but you can talk to the experience of being a volunteer and a yes. very active one. Yes. Um, so, and, and you, I know one of my favorite events that IAC does is actually the, the skiing. Because how much fun is it to like dress up in costume and then go skiing? Yes. <laughs> um, which I know I've 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 watched and I've I've uh, donated monies to. Um, when does that happen? That's usually in March, I believe. Um, but yeah, it's in the spring, and they do it up at Birch Hill, and it's cross country skiing, and it's non competitive, so you don't have to actually know how to ski or <laughs> go fast for that matter. Um, so it's and it's a fun family event too. Families come to it, whole families, like they all ski. It's really fun, and they do a big potluck, and they give away door prizes and. It's like super awesome. Well, and that's one of those things where if you wanted to ski, you can get sponsors that yes. are willing to give you so much money. Mm -hmm. Is that like per minute or just a flat rate or however they want to do it? Or? Yeah, it's however you want to do it. Um, you don't have to get sponsors to ski in the event. Um, I have in, in years past. Um, but it's something that a community can be involved in because if you go through the community and say, look, I'm going to. Um, go do this fundraiser for IAC. Would you please sponsor me for five dollars? You know, and so you could do that with anybody in the community, and then it could be like a combined effort. And I actually have raised thousands of dollars doing that. So, and that's really cool. And tell me just a little bit more about the mask making. Um, the mask making is uh, there's an annual event that they do in the fall that's. Um, it's called Behind the Mask, I think is what it's called. And it's, uh, it's centered around the art community. So um, specifically art made in Alaska. Okay. So there are artists that donate their works to be auctioned at this fundraiser. And then there are survivors that have literally created or decorated a, a real mask and um, to express their individuality and their experience. It's a representation of a survivor. And then those um, beautiful masks are auctioned off uh, as part of the fundraiser as well. And I've, I've created several of them and it's a really neat project. That's really cool. That's actually really cool. And that one I was just not as familiar with. And I know IAC needs help year round. Yes. So, and it's one of those things where Christmas is always a harder time. People always need more at that time. Yes. Um, and it is oftentimes that, that moment when people are like looking at their lives too and decide that you know maybe it's time that they need to make a break. The holidays can be very stressful. Yes. Um, but just just bear in mind that IAC can use those things, the, the underwear, the couch that's in your garage, um, anything that you see in your home that needs a home that's not being purposed there can be repurposed by IAC um, as long as it's in good condition working order, all of that good stuff. And so gifts, people want to leave gifts, just remember to leave them unwrapped um, when you're donating them. And 26th and, and you know the cross street? Uh, it's over by the J.P. Jones, Yeah, right? it's, a, it's literally across the street from the food bank. So if you know where the food bank is on 26th Avenue, yeah, it's just a couple blocks down from South Cushman. Yeah, so across street from the food bank, mm -hmm. the Resource Center for Parents' is Children is right next door mm -hmm. as well. The WIC Center's there. And the WIC Center's there mm -hmm. in the center, I believe. Yes. And they are always in need of your donations. Um, and, uh, and, and Melanie, Thanks again for coming. Um, sure. Is there anything else that we can look forward to from IAC or any of these other groups that you're working with? Um, this is a current project, but it's something that we're hoping to do every year. Um, I guess at one time, some of these student orgs that I'm working with had done something similar, and then it had kind of dropped off for a couple years. So this is something that I'm just helping to revive. But there are gift drives and fundraisers for IAC that go on year round that multiple uh, people in the community and businesses in the community help to sponsor. So I'm just one of many. Very cool. Very cool. And so this is something that we're hoping that can keep happening on campus. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm hoping. And we can keep having these Christmas drives for IAC. Yes. And I think that's really great and I think it's something that um, all these clubs really benefit from participating in as well. Yes. So, very cool. 
Well, um, thanks again for coming on the show today. Sure. Um, and just one more time for our, our audience out, out there in the world, could you tell them the phone number and possibly the website one more time? Yes, okay, so 452-2293 is the IAC phone number. And the website is www.iacnlv, and it's .org. .org. Not .com, .org. .org. Yes. So. So remember, out there, Fairbanks, this is your community. We need to help take care of each other. And I, uh, again, really appreciate you coming on. Um, check out IAC's website or their, give them a call and see what you can do to help them this Christmas. Um, next up, we have Annie Bartholomew. I'm Annette Pearson, and thanks for watching. Welcome back to Fairbanks Focus Alaska View. I'm your host, Annie Bartholomew, here with UAF student Ashley Strauch, an ASUAF member. Can you tell me a little bit more about ASUAF and what they've been up to lately? Sure. Um, so ASUAF stands for Associated Students of University of Alaska Fairbanks. And any student taking three or more credits automatically pays a fee to ASUAF. And that fee is then used um, by the senators and allocated for different activities, projects, uh, student interests. So. I'm one of the senators that helps allocate that funding and uh, also as a senator you represent the voice of students and so you spend a lot of time talking to students about their concerns. What made you want to become a senator? I actually got really interested in it after my boyfriend became the vice president uh, a couple years ago and he really got me involved but now I'm really motivated myself to keep doing it and to talk to students. and. It's been super amazing to get to know a lot of different people on campus and different issues going on. Great. And I hear you're working on a resolution. What are those? So a resolution is basically a, a statement that represents the voice of the student body. So we have bills and resolutions and directives. And bills are to allocate money to certain things, and resolutions are to um, say that something needs to be done or this is a concern of students, anything like that. So uh, this resolution is looking into residence life and learning about that. <laughs> and what is residence life? So residence life is the on-campus housing uh, for students and it includes family housing and the apartments and the dorms um, are all part of residence life. Why did you feel it was important to make a resolution supporting an investigation of residence life? So the investigation, um, the idea for it came about after hearing about a lot of incidents that students were having problems with and hearing about a lot of student concerns with residence life. And actually, ASUAF every election does poll questions. And one of our poll questions last year was, which of these departments do you feel needs the most attention? And Residence Life was on that question, and it was um, the number one or the number two that was needing attention. And then just listening to students, it finally came to our attention that we really need to do something. And so this resolution is calling for an evaluation of Residence Life to be done. Can you give me some examples of some of the complaints you may have received from students? Yeah. So. I've heard about a lot of different things from students. Most of them branch back to customer service, bad customer service problems, um, not having good interactions with the administrators and staff. Um, and then a lot of it also has to do with transparency. Um, a lot of students feel like there's a big disconnect between what the rules in residence life are and what they know are the rules and what they can and cannot do and inconsistencies in how different rules are applied and how different punishments are applied for students as well. Are there some certain policies that students are particularly disenfranchised with? Yeah, um, some of the guest policies, um, some of the different um, policies with how sanctions are applied, um, so like the punishments that students receive, um, there's a lot of different things that go into it, and really it's, it's specific. Some students will come up and be super vehement, like, oh, I had this huge problem with um, a guest policy, or I had this huge problem with an alcohol policy. And so 
it really kind of depends on the student, but there's been a lot of things that have come up. What's it like to hear these complaints as a senator? It's really hard because I've been a senator for over a year and it's something that I didn't really know was as big of an issue as it is until I, I started listening to it. And now that I've taken the time to talk to students, it's really eye-opening. And some of the things that I've been hearing have really just blown my mind. People talking about sexual assaults that have happened and the way that those situations were handled not being adequate. People talking about just the, the nature of customer service and how um, RAs and administrators particularly have interacted with them is really tough to hear. So, so how can students get involved? Well, right now we're asking um, for student signatures on our petition, and the petition is to support the evaluation being done. Um, and the main thing that we're looking for, though, is student testimonies. So about 500 to 1,000 words, so around a page long. And they can be former or current residents and former or current staff members. And we're asking that people submit these testimonies um, in order to show that there is student support for this, that these student concerns are widespread, and that there's a lot of um, need for this evaluation to be done. Now, will these student names remain confidential? Yes. If students want to remain anonymous, they absolutely can. Some students are preferring to actually submit their name and contact information. And if they do that, that does come with kind of the, the um, potential that the chancellor or his staff might contact that person and ask for more information later on um, if the evaluation goes through. Um, but a lot of students are preferring to remain anonymous, and that's completely fine. And who will see these testimonies? Um, I'm asking that they be sent to me or to one of the other sponsors on the legislation or to Ann Williamson, who is our ASUAF office manager. And so whoever those testimonies originally get sent to, whoever that person is comfortable sending them to, um, that's the only person who would see that person's name. After that, we're going to just put them in a big pile. And those that want to remain anonymous, their names will be taken off automatically. And how can they reach you? Is it through email or a hard copy? Yeah, a hard copy is fine. Um, we're just asking that students bring them into the ASUAF office. And other than that, people are also welcome to send them into my email, which is A-E-S-T-R-A-U-C-H-A-E-Strauch at alaska.edu. And that's the main way I've been receiving them. Are you worried about any repercussions from ResLife or their response to the resolution? I, I definitely would like to point out that this is not supposed to be an attack on any person or individual within residence life. It's more meant to be something to point out that there are system-wide problems that require system-wide improvements. There are policies and practices that require attention at the very least and um, ideally require some change. And so really, you know, working with students on this has been super eye-opening to learn about it and to, to figure out what we need to do. What do you hope will happen if the resolution is passed? So the resolution actually calls for the evaluation. The evaluation wouldn't be conducted by ASUAF. Um, the senators who are sponsoring the legislation ultimately feel like we are not able to be objective in our evaluation. And the evaluation should be done by a third party committee that can be objective and can also be really action oriented. I imagine that the evaluation itself would take more than a year, probably a couple of years to really do thoroughly and to come up with reasonable solutions. And so the resolution is calling for that committee to be formed and for that evaluation to get started. So it's, it's meant to catalyze that, not to actually go forth and, and do the evaluation. Who do you think the committee will be comprised of? I'm hoping that it would be students, staff, and faculty that the chancellor and his staff appoint for it. Um, there have been faculty concerns, and so it would be nice to get a little bit of that perspective in there. And there have been a lot of staff concerns. And then, of course, students, because it's a student issue. Why do you think faculty and staff are concerned? I think that a lot of uh, faculty are concerned because they hear about their students having these problems. 
Uh, my own academic mentors are very concerned listening to what I have to say, and I know that other faculty are concerned listening to what their students have to say as well. So I think faculty have a really good perspective having gone through college themselves, a lot of them having gone to UAF themselves at some point, and same with staff, and so they kind of have a good perspective on what things can be like at other places and what changes might need to happen. Do they think the culture of residence life has changed since their time as students at UAF? Oh, I don't know. That's so hard to say because the staff has changed quite a bit. Um, Laura McCulloch, who's the current director of Res Life, has not been there for too long. Um, but I think staff would say and faculty would say that there have been a lot of changes. And whether those changes are good or bad is really subjective. So. Great. So when is this resolution up for a vote? Um, ideally, it's being reviewed this week for the final week, and it should be voted on the week after Thanksgiving. And students who are really interested in talking to the senators about this should definitely come to the ASUAF meetings on Sundays at 4 p.m. in the Alumni Lounge. That's where we generally get a lot of talking about it done. Is there uh, a time during the meeting for students to actually speak out? Yeah, um, right during the beginning of the meeting. So if students show up right at 4 o'clock. We have introduction of guests and guest remarks and if students have specific concerns they want to bring up they can come into the meeting and talk about them. Um, and also during the meeting senators can yield speaking time to different individuals too. Wonderful. And can you tell our audience again if they want to submit a testimonial how they can do that? Yeah, so if you want to submit a testimonial, you can submit it to myself at aestrauch, S-T-R-A-U-C-H, at alaska.edu. Uh, testimonies can also be submitted to Ann Williamson in the ASUAF office. She's our office manager. Uh, and they can also be submitted to Bricks Hahn or Cordero Reed or Daniel Striegel, who's our Senate chair, or Ayla O'Scannell. If you get it to any senator in ASUAF, we promise it will be kept confidential and it will be turned in. <laughs> now are you looking for an email or a letter or a Word document? How should it be formatted? Um, it can be a Word document and it's talking about your own experiences and those experiences can be positive or negative. We don't want to limit it to complaints. So if you've had a really great experience with Res Life, we're asking that students submit that too. That's important. That's valuable to know. Um, so basically a Word document, an email, a hard copy, whatever you want to get, that's, that's fine with us. Great. And is there anything else you want to say to our viewers out there who may be students, faculty members, or just not even associated with campus? Yeah. Um, please get involved if you've had an experience with Res Life that's good, bad, ugly. I want to know about it. Other senators want to know about it. It's important to us that we address these issues. And it's important to administrators at the university to hear our concerns. So I highly encourage everyone to get involved. Well, thank you for coming on the show. This is Ashley Strauch, ASUAF senator, UAF psychology student, and I'm Annie Bartholomew. If you'd like to learn more about Fairbanks Focus, you can visit FairbanksFocus.com. Thank you for watching.